Hey everyone, Danelle Jones here, and this week I wanted to have a chat to you about what to do when you don't know all the answers. Um, you'll probably often hear me use the phrase that great leaders don't ever have all the answers, but they do know how to ask great questions. And so a lot of the leadership development work that we're doing on, um, on ourselves when we're working in responsive organizations is about how do I let go of that notion of having all the answers um, and instead embrace a little bit more uncertainty, uh, allow the team some more autonomy and some decision making, um, and how do I keep it all on track and not let it go completely off the rails? <laughs> um, and that's really important if we're going to continue to favor progress over perfection and start to unleash this innovation in our teams and in our organizations. So that's all well and good, asking great questions. Well, what does that look like in practice? So um, I have used the example in the past of your team coming to you and telling you that they've decided that the button on the website needs to be blue and you're convinced that it needs to be green. Um, and in that case, what you need to do is let go and ask that question, what data have you got to support the idea that it needs to be blue as opposed to green? And if they've got the data, then you need to let them go. Um, and I really thankful for Gary for sharing that uh, example with me one of my early mentors it was just it was such a stark example uh, but we came up with another example in a team this week who are working to put in a new piece of software into an existing ecosystem um, and it's pretty scary because they haven't done this size of change before so it's a bit of a um, like a mega project for that team for that company for that IT department it's kind of as big as it gets so understandably people are a little nervous and team had worked through this week and said okay we we know where we're up to on all of these points what's holding us back what's stopping us from taking that next step we've got an initial prototype that's in we know where we want to go next <clears throat> excuse me and what is it that, that's stopping us from doing that next step in the prototype um, and I had a conversation with their stakeholders and through that process, it became apparent that there's a lot of nervousness about what it's going to look like fully fledged in practice. And that's completely understandable. We're always going to have those points and projects. And as the team dug deeper, they found that there wasn't even necessarily a list that you could, a, a list of known examples that you could tick off and go, yep, we need to test these things. And at that point, we'll be comfortable. There's actually a big part of this particular initiative that was the unknown unknowns and so all of a sudden you find yourself in this position where you go well, how do we deal with that so in the absence of knowing all the answers one really really great thing to do is to build a highly responsive team so that if and when stuff goes wrong we can fix it quickly because we're already aware that we can only tick off so many of these scenarios and there's a whole bunch of stuff that we don't know about the likelihood that we get something to go wrong is probably high, um, or at least the perception that we have a problem is high. And therefore, what are we going to do when that happens? Well, the best thing that we can do is be well prepared, ready to go and respond really quickly so that we can get through those hurdles and get through those challenges and solve them as and when they come up. And so what that looks like is getting together a group of people. So for example, if you are plugging this new piece of software into a finance system um, or a CRM and you know that there's three or four or nine or ten of these specific tricky problems or edge cases and the way that you want to move data around the system and you, you, you can go through and test those examples, sure. Best thing to do is to get everybody in the room that's going to be a part of both your team, that CRM team and the people that use it, that finance system and the people that use that bringing them together and working through those problems together, working through those prototypes in your test environment, working through it as a team and keeping a really, really close eye on when work is staying in your team and you're able to solve it with that group of people or when a problem comes up that needs to, it, it needs to leave the team. You need to go and find somebody else with a different skill set and bring them in to solve that problem. And so keeping a really close eye on that as you work through the problems that you do know about and ticking those off the list means that as you go into that next phase where you sort of just got to take that leap, 
you've got a list of people that you know you need to bring together in a hurry if you do have a problem. And having them primed and ready to be that responsive team makes all the difference. So uh, if you're in the middle of a big tricky problem and you don't necessarily know what to do about it, go through that process of gathering those people around you that have that subject matter expertise but as you solve it, keep track of those people that came with you along the journey so that the next time one of those similar problems comes up, you're able to pull together that team quickly and be responsive. And it's particularly important if you're trying to um, put a relatively large piece of functionality into production. So I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful week. Um, and I'd love to hear your comments below. Maybe share some experiences around being in that situation yourself where you've not necessarily had all the answers and how did you handle it? Leave me a comment below, I'd love to hear. Thanks.